G'day, and welcome to AOS Coach. One of the most impactful decisions that you will make in every single game is the decision of if you take the first turn or the second turn in the battle round. Now, there's no easy answer on if you go first or second. You may find yourself that you've won the priority role or you finished deploying your army first and you are the one that needs to make the choice. So how do you know if you go first or second in the turn? Because ultimately this decision will change depending on the battle plan that you're facing, the opponent you're up against, the army that you're playing, the battle round that you're in, and how the game is just generally flowing. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the considerations that I think about when I go into a battle round and think, do I go first or do I go second? Now, the, the considerations that I'm going to share are universal to every player. I'm not going to do specific armies that I play like Sons of Behemad or Daughters of Cain or Gloomspike Gits. However, when you look through the lens of the armies, for example, that I just mentioned, each of your factions might have a stronger lean towards one way or the other. So keep that in mind, but I'm going to share some universal truths that you might want to consider when you have to choose who goes first and who goes second in the battle round. There's a lot of good reasons on why you want to go first in the battle round. You might want to retreat a unit out of an unfavorable combat. You may find that you have charged a unit into combat or your opponent has charged you and things just aren't going your way. So you want that unit out as quick as possible. Perhaps you've taken the grand strategy of hold the line and you want this battle line unit to survive. Maybe you want to put a more powerful unit in its place or maybe you want to retreat out of combat and try to put more bodies onto an objective. You might see a great opportunity to destroy a key unit that is going to hurt your opponent's ability to win the game. It could be a hero that has a powerful command ability, it's a high damage monster, a wizard who may be exposed now that you could shoot off or magic off if you've got some powerful wizards, or you might be able to send some troops in that, are, that hit hard and they move fast. Whatever it is, I need to bring it down and I need to bring it down quickly. So this can be a great reason when I'm facing a summonable unit that could regenerate bodies, things like demons or death units, or even if they have something like Emerald Life Swarm, I want to destroy the unit as quick as possible so it doesn't grow back in size. I might be able to seize control of an objective that will score me more victory points and deny my opponent from scoring. Or I might see a, an objective that is currently a little bit weak and I might be able to reinforce it with more bodies before my opponent is able to get some bodies onto it. And if I take t the first turn, it allows me to put more bodies on there and not lose control of it. There might be a gap in the battlefield where finally I can bring down one of my reserve units and there's a really good space, an advantageous space that I can bring them down, shoot the hero, claim an objective, deny them board presence, block them off with a screen, whatever it might be. I might be able to charge them after I, I set up from reserve if I get a good dice roll. Whatever it might be, there might be a really good spot to put that reserve unit down. My opponent may have failed to cast some of their important spells, or maybe they even rolled a miscast so some of their wizards didn't get off any of their buffs. Whatever it might be, this might be a really good opportunity to do some serious damage to my opponent while those important spells and abilities haven't been applied. When you've got a unit or multiple units that are now in range to shoot your opponent, it might be a great opportunity to do some damage to them before they start coming in for the charge, before they start challenging for your objectives. And if you've got a command point up your sleeve, when it goes into their turn, you can unleash hell and do some more shooting when they charge. And finally, whatever it might be, it might be a great opportunity for me to score a battle tactic. There might be something in my list, especially as I go down, and it might be the third battle round or the fourth battle round, and scoring battle tactics are getting harder and harder. This might be a great opportunity for me. I see an opportunity. I see a battle tactic that's currently available that I haven't scored yet. This might be a reason just to get those two additional victory points and take the advantage while it's open, because if you were to give it away, that might actually close off. I've talked a lot about going first. Now, often you'll find that going first isn't actually the best option. Um, if you played in previous editions of Age of Sigma, most people would fight over going first. However, in third edition and many times in the battle, actually going second is actually the better option. So here's some of the considerations that I would have if I was to give away the first turn and then go at the bottom of the battle round. 
Your army is hungry for command points and you need as many as you can get. You're like the cookie monster but with command points. Me want command points. Hmm. Going second will give you a bonus command point so you can fully unleash unleash hell. You can throw down all that defense. You can redeploy or you could use a command ability that might be on one of your leader's war scrolls. So you want to save up your command points. You want to punish your opponent in the later game and you want to be able to hopefully double turn them. So you might want to, a double turn for anyone who doesn't know or familiar with it. It's when you go twice in a row. So let's say for example, I went last in the second battle round, won the, the priority role in the third, and I went first. Essentially, I had two turns in a row. There might be a time where actually I'm, I'm hoping for the, the double turn, and doing a double turn early on in the game, so from one to two or two to three, isn't always um, a, a, gr a good strategy. And often around battle round three to battle round four often is when you want the double turn. Maybe sometimes battle round two, depending on your opponent and how the battle's going. Now, while the double turn sounds wonderful um, for you, obviously not for your opponent, um, you can't always guarantee that you're going to win the priority roll. So often you've got to really consider about not overextending. You know, if you win it, that's great because you can punish them with more rounds of magic, shooting and combat. But if you overextend your hand and you lose the priority roll, make sure you've got a defensive strategy in play as well as an offensive one. Now you might give it away because you're confident that you could survive another battle round. It could be battle rounds of combat, shooting, magic from your opponent, you know, your unit is sitting on an objective comfortably and you aren't concerned that the opponent has enough damage to shift you off the objective and, and take it off you. Uh, and in fact, by, by sitting there and giving away the turn, but keeping your units on the objectives, you will actually deny them opportunity to score in that turn. So, you know, really thinking about the, the defensive play, if you are able to put out, again, a defensive buff, you've got a Mystic Shield on, you've got all that defense, you are regenerating or you've got a whole bunch of bodies, it could actually be really good just to sit there and deny your, your opponent from scoring that turn. You might give away the turn if you see that your opponent's key units are out of threat range. Their wizards are too far to cast their spells. Their co their combat units are aren't fast enough to get into into the charge. You might find that their shooters in the in the in a movement and a shooting phase wouldn't be able to pick off your key pieces, or they wouldn't be able to do as much damage as if you were to take the turn, move up, and then more of your units are in range. So you might be able to waste someone's magic and shooting phase just by giving them the turn. And this is very important, especially in the early game. You know, in, in, if you go to the top of turn one, you might not be in range to cast spells. So that's wasting one of your five turns to cast spells. And that's going to be very powerful. And finally, your units have their buffs, abilities, things that are extended onto them until your next hero phase. And sometimes things like spells, Mystic Shield, for example, could be a, a signature spell in your army or on a war scroll. These can be quite hard to cast, especially with some of those wizards that have a high unbind uh, roll. They might get pluses or uh, they just got really unlucky on the unbind roll and you got it off. It actually might be worth giving it away just so you don't risk losing that spell when you go first. You try to roll those dice and unfortunately you roll a miscast, you fail the roll, your opponent gets lucky and hits that really high unbind range and then you've lost your ability that would hinder combat, shooting, whatever it might be. So uh, retaining your buffs for a little bit longer could actually be worth giving away the turn in addition to some of these other things that I've mentioned about extra CPs, uh, denying them X, Y, and Z. You're probably wondering, what do I like to do? And to be honest with you, if I had a perfect plan, I would give it to you right this second. But ultimately, it really does depend on how the battle is going. You know, what battle plan am I playing? Um, what's the deployment difference? How fast is my opponent? What army is my opponent playing? What army am I playing? You know, what are the threat options that are available to us? Shooting, magic, combat, uh, all of the good stuff. In the first turn... Often I find that I want to go second because I want the extra command point. I want to have my shooting and magic in range. And if I go first, the distance between me and my opponent usually means that I miss one of my five magic rounds. I'm going to miss one of my five shooting opportunities. So for me to give away the first turn is, all, is often quite important. However, in saying that, there are merits in going first at the, in the first battle round. It could be that I, I move up onto the objectives. And it's always good to have a plan because sometimes 
you're not going to get that choice. It'll be your opponent that gets the choice. So if you happen to find yourself being given first turn, cool. Let's go and take on some objectives. Let's score an early battle tactic where my opponent can't deny me. Um, I might want to use something that's easier to achieve and doesn't require me killing my opponent. I can start moving up to the battlefield. I can make a run roll and really spread myself out. If they've got units in reserve, I can start spreading them out so that there's less space for my opponent to bring those reserve units in. Outside of the first turn and it comes to the other battle rounds, I try not to go into a battle with a pre-constructed plan, but rather I like to assess the decisions at the point in time. You know, what are the pros and cons? If I roll that dice in the priority roll and I win it, what's the pros of me taking it? What's the cons of me giving it away? What is the likely outcome? Could my units holding an objective keep holding the objective? Could I fight myself out of combat? Would my opponent cast magic or shoot or um, charge me in a certain area? Would they be able to pull down one of my key support pieces? W what, what could possibly... And look... I don't know exactly how the game's gonna gonna go. I don't have the Back to the Future um, almanac to, to see how this game is gonna go. But I can make some rough educated decisions to say, right, well, based on the amount of damage that I know these units could do, or based on the previous battle round, this is what my opponent may or may not wanna do. Remember that you don't always get to choose who goes first or who goes second, and it's gonna come down to a dice roll. In the first battle round, it's gonna come down to who deploys first, so if you really want to go first and you want to be super aggressive early on, you need to really reduce your deployment drops as much as possible, potentially getting that unified force to go as low as one deployment drop. But in the other battle rounds, you know, you're going to be based off a dice roll. So if you lose that dice roll, that priority roll, and you've played overly aggressive your army, you've advanced up the battlefield, you've run up the board, your support heroes maybe are, aren't protected, and you lose that priority roll really your opponent is going to have everything in range too to shoot cast spells charge it's going to be easier for them to charge and get more of their units into combat so it's often about being aggressive and expansive but also making the right decisions because overextending yourself you can get punished now it is worth noting that if you're playing in the general's handbook 2021 which is currently at as recording and we are playing in the realm of gur there are additional benefits in um in going first or going second in the battle round and specifically i'm calling out a rule that is based around the third battle round so if you go second you can remove an objective and uh, you can't remove primary objectives do check your, your general's handbook for the rules around the the shifting of objectives and how that all kind of plays about but there are additional incentives on top of that but not only uh, does the general handbook have incentives but rather each army construction is going to incentivize you or your opponent to go first or go second a army with a powerful you know wizard doesn't want to go first as i mentioned but if they took something like the Umbral Spell Portal, which is one of the endless spells, they're actually able to extend their spell range through the Umbral Spell Portal. So there are ways to work around it. Armies like Iron Jaws, for example, have the speed to be able to charge into you in the first turn. Iron the Deepkin want to be able to go first in the third battle round because they have an ability that allows them to strike first right now. So, and, and maybe if their book gets updated, that might change. But I guess what I'm trying to show you here is that each army can often have an incentive on if they'd like to go first or go second. But as always, I'm really curious to hear how you are thinking about the priority role. Do you like to go first? And most people do like to go first. Age of Sigma 3rd Edition has really put a spanner in the works because there's now really heavy incentives for you to go second. So I'd love to hear from you. Well, one, do you like to go first? Do you go second in the battle round? If you get the choice, that is. And which are the armies? And is there a reason why? Is it what I just mentioned? Um, you know, is it about summonable units and keeping them alive? Is your army all about attack and you just want to be able to be aggressive and just attack your opponent and, and dominate them? Is it about shooting? Is it about something else? What specifically is it that li you like to go first or you like to go second? Leave it in the comment section. Curious to hear from you and I'm sure other people would love to hear how you're looking at the priority role. 
Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.